sharing a fiery core practice from my archives today. You can use this practice as a standalone workout on its own. You can use it as a cross training, or you can use it as a warm up for a much more complicated movement practice that you're doing. Now, if you're using it as a standalone practice, please know that this is just a clip from a live class and it doesn't have a Shavasana or meditation that I would typically end with. So you can add that at the end on your own or dance party at the end. Enjoy. We're gonna start on our backs. So get a comfortable position on your back with your knees bent. And let's take about just a minute, half a minute to connect to breath. Invite your breath to be easy in and out through the nose. And allow your awareness to stay in breath, no matter what we do, no matter how challenging it gets. Your respiratory diaphragm, which connects to all of the lowest ribs, this is fundamental to breath, but it's also the lid of the core. And so if you can really keep your breath flowing fully and freely, it helps to pressurize and manage the pressure system that is our core. And at your next exhale, hands can be by your side. Please flatten your back. Just feel this little bit of a posterior pelvic tilt. Inhale to neutral. Exhale, flatten your back. Inhale, neutral. And then exhale, keep it flat as you draw your right knee into your chest. You don't have to use your arms just now. You're just going to draw it in and then sweep the leg up towards the sky. Keep this connected quality of your low back to the floor. Lower your right leg down all the way till it's hovering over the floor. And then draw it right back up. Keep your toes active. Draw it down all the way to a hover and right back up. And then this time as you go down, go all the way out to the side, try not to use your arms, back up to neutral and then lower down. It's like you're drawing the letter D, capital letter D. If you want, you can take your hands to the back of your head. Try not to let your pelvis tilt too much. And one last time. Nice, draw your knee in, keep your knee in, and lift with your hips. So push through that left leg, lift them up, and lower down. We're going to do 10 of these. Connect to breath, go as slowly as you wish. Single leg bridges. Press through the big toe wall mound of the left foot. And if you feel a little burning, that's a great thing. All the way down and wiggle your feet to the very edges of your yoga mat just to get into the hips a little bit. You're going to drop your knees right and left, all the way right and all the way left. Coming back through to center. Flatten your back and draw that left knee into your chest. Hands can be either by your sides or behind the head like mine are. Left leg reaches to the sky. Don't worry if the leg is straight. And then lower. Keep your low back glued down and lift it up. Lower the leg and lift. And this time as you lower, we're going to start to make that reverse, that opposite letter D shape. So you're going to come up, out and up, and down. Out and up. Stay connected to your core the whole time. If you're not quite sure if your low back is staying down, you could also slide your hands under your low back and try to keep the pressure nice and even there. One last semicircle. And then please draw your left knee to your chest, hands to the back of your head or arms by your side. Raise up into your single leg bridge and lower. Move with breath, breath in and out through the nose. This is a hard one. If you get any cramping in your hamstrings, you got three more, you guys. You can put your hand to the back of your leg and kick it up a little bit. Let me finish out my 10. 
And then back onto the back. Both knees come into your chest. Bring your hands to the back of your head, and you're going to want to squeeze your legs together really strongly right now. So start off in this 90-90 position. Now, this takes a bit of active middle body work, core work, so to speak, to keep the legs right here without um, arching my back and without um, pulling the knees into my chest. So it takes a little bit active zip up through the belly, and I'm going to draw both of my knees up and over as close as I can bring to my right elbow without dropping down to the side. Come back through to center, up and over as close as possible to the left elbow. Try not to use the elbows, and back to neutral. Up and over to the right. Up and over to the left. Connect to core, over right. Over left. Building a little heat in the body. It's tempting to separate the knees, and of course you can do that if you're uncomfortable in your hips here. But try to keep the legs glued together. This adds a little bit of oomph to the core. We've got one more right. One more left. And as you come back through the center, bring your legs up towards the ceiling, open into a V shape. It doesn't have to be the biggest V ever. And then cross right thigh over left, curl your tailbone up. Inhale, open. Exhale, cross left thigh over right, curl the tailbone up. Inhale, open. Exhale, cross and curl. Inhale, open. Exhale, cross and curl. Inhale, open. Exhale, cross. Inhale, open. Exhale, cross. One more time each side. And other side, squeeze, lift, hold it for a couple of seconds here. See if you can slide a bigger piece of paper under your sacrum. And then draw your knees into your chest, rock a little side to side. So I like to take right here something that looks like happy baby, but it's really a very soft version of happy baby. Your knees are wide. Your feet, instead of being pointed up towards the ceiling, you've got your feet just kind of floppy and the lower half of your legs floppy. Just rock the boat a little bit, right and left, getting into the hips. And then we're going to draw the legs right back together. Bring the legs right back into that 90-90 position. And this time, it's all about uh, reaching. So right hand to the back of the head. Left arm reaches towards the sky. You're going to lower your left leg. Stretch it out about 45 degrees. And left hand reaches, reaches, reaches to the outside of the right leg. Inhale, neutral. Exhale, other side. Inhale, neutral. Exhale, first side. Try to reach towards the bottom of your pants. Inhale, neutral. Exhale and curl. Inhale, neutral. Try to bring your ribs towards your pelvis here. And then one more time. Each side, once to the right. Hold it for a couple of seconds. Left leg is active, 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 active. Low back is rooted. And then once to the other side. Low back is really rooted. Ribs connecting to the pelvis. And then inhale, neutral. Set your feet down as we did before. Swish your knees as much as you'd like to the right and to the left. And then you're going to cross left ankle over the right knee. Try not to use your hands to do this. And float your right foot up. You're just going to start to pulse a little bit towards the shin, towards your chest. Now, what's going to happen here is really you're going to recruit your abdominal muscles. So I would rather you do more of this tailbone up action, just like if we were going into Galavasana, the nice little bird, uh, flying bird pose. And then we're going to add the head to it as well. So jazz hands, like kind of splay the hands and the fingers up towards the ceiling. Curl your head and your shoulders. Curl your tailbone. All toes are active even though you can't see because we're still wearing socks. Inhale down. If you need a little support for your head, scoop one hand behind the head. Inhale down. Exhale, curl it up. Inhale down. Exhale, curl. Inhale down, and last one. 
All right, let's take a little bit of a rest. Keep this configuration of the legs in figure four. You're gonna drop the feet over towards the right side of the mat. And with your right hand, just gently push that top knee away from you a little bit. If you prefer, you can pull it towards you, but just choose one direction and stick to it. Release, legs back to neutral, shake them out a little bit up towards the sky, and then cross right ankle over the left thigh. And again, this pulsation in the direction, it's a figure four stretch, it's like pigeon on your back. The fancy Sanskrit word for the arm balance that we're mimicking here is Eka Pada Galavasana. So we're just working the front hip points closer and closer to the low ribs in front. And then hands to the ceiling, jazz hands. Add your upper body as well. So you're trying to curl into this tiny little shape. Big exhale as you curl, if that feels good. Feel free to support your head. Reaching right past your shins as if you were balancing your shin on your arm here. Last two. And then come on down. Root your elbows, press your pelvis to the sky, and just stretch out the front of the body a little bit here in bridge pose. So you wanna be wearing your socks, and we're gonna be dealing with the socks in just a moment, but have your left foot flat to the floor, right leg straight up towards the ceiling right now. And let's go back to the, the single leg bridges that we did before, but now we're gonna add a little bit more. So the legs straight to the ceiling. Think about not going too high with this bridge and instead finding a neutral spine. This will really activate your left hamstrings, your left glutes, if the left foot's the one on the ground. And last one, hold it up. Maybe make a circle with your right leg. Switch the direction of the circle. And then draw everything back down, knees to chest, rock a little side to side. We've got one more side for the single leg bridges. Right foot down to the ground, left leg more or less straight up towards the sky. And rise and lower. Breath is easy, in and out through the nose. Last one, keep it up, and let's draw a big circle here. Leg up in the sky, draws a big circle, couple of times in one direction. Keep the pelvis lifted and switch it up. Take it in the other direction. And then slowly lower down, all knees to chest. Scoop behind your legs, rock up to a balancing point on your sitting bones. We're gonna do three kinds of rocking. So the first one is this one, which you're probably familiar with and you're welcome to stick to. The second is to make a diamond shape with your legs and catch hold of your ankles, not so much behind your knees, not so much your feet, but your ankles. You have to really, really curl your spine here. So rock back and see if you can find your balance point here. And last one. And then if you wanna try one more kind of way to rock up, you can go hands-free. So play with that or any of the other variations. And then once you're up, bring your hands behind you. In fact, let's come on down to our forearms here and raise your legs towards the ceiling. Again, don't worry if your legs go straight or not. We're gonna lower the right leg down and then both legs about 12 inches out to the side. Squeeze it in. Cross through the midline, open and squeeze, crossing the midline, making an X, open and squeeze. Legs are so far apart from one another. Last one. Draw your knees to your chest and switch sides. Right leg up, left leg lowers and open and squeeze. Open and squeeze. 
open. Let the breath be easy. Last one. And then draw your knees in. Rock up. Catch right behind the thighs. Bring your shins to parallel with the floor. Roll your shoulder blades back. Lift your chest and reach through the arms. So from here, we're going to lower just one leg right back up and then the other right back up. Go as slowly as you need to. Use your hands behind you if you need to. Just a little bit of lowering, or you can lower all the way down into an Ardha Navasana. Last time on the right. Last time on the left. Good. Cross out your shins. Roll over into hands and knees. You'll want your fingers to be spread really wide apart here. Go ahead and just allow yourself a moment to get your heart rate back to normal. Curl your toes under, wiggle in any way that feels good. We'll do a tiny bit to warm up the hands. Come onto your fingertips and lower the palms. Fingertips and palms. Fingertips and palms. I want you to feel a little bit of fatigue with this. And think about landing the base of the fingers before the palm. Last two. When you're ready, from your neutral spine, move through a few rounds of cat and cow, just about three rounds. Inhaling, belly down, heart forward. Exhaling, rounding up towards the sky. From here, curl your toes under really, really powerfully, okay? So you're going to want to get this little extra bonus, if it's okay for your knees, this little extra bonus mobility happening in your toes. Getting in the toes to about 90 degrees and having them spread out underneath of you, a little tricky in socks, but nice when you don't have the socks on and you're on a sticky mat. This is a really important functional movement for our bodies. Back to neutral, float your knees just one or two inches off the floor and start to rock a little bit front to back. Now we don't have any props for this class today, so I want you to squeeze your inner thighs to this imaginary midline, an imaginary block between your legs. And then as you lean in, set your left foot to the outside of your left hand and back, and right foot to the outside of your right hand. It's totally fine to come onto your fingertips and left. Try not to lift your hips high, keeping the hips nice and low. And last one, come on down, toes curl under, optional child's pose. One of the things that is really, really essential to a good down dog is to allow your shoulder blades to move and allow your shoulder blades to move upward. So we're going to shift forward onto our forearms so that you can feel that action for yourself. Coming onto hands in, or really forearms and knees, you're going to drop through the belly, pull the heart through, and then exhale, round up. Drop through the belly, pull the heart through. This time, exhale, round it up. Make sure your head's far from the floor as possible. Toes are still curled under. Lift your knees two inches off the floor. Lower down. Inhale, heart forward. Exhale, really, really round and curl. Knees lift maybe a little bit higher. Try to drag your yoga mat in towards you in the middle. And then settle one last time. Heart reaches forward. Exhale round. Push the ground away. Draw your knees up towards your belly button. Keeping the hips low. Pushing the upper arms down into the ground. And then find neutral. Come on back to table pose. Please reach your left leg behind you. Left leg up to hip height. Right hand comes to the abdomen. Go ahead and start to draw some circles with your left leg. Mm -hmm. 
We'll switch direction with the circle. The hand on the belly is there to give you a little bit of feedback about keeping your spine neutral. I always feel like I'm just learning how to draw a circle when I do this. Try to make it as smooth as you can. We're gonna switch sides, shake it out. Please bring your left hand to your abdomen. This is all about, you could also put on your low back here. This is all about maintaining a neutral spine. Right leg lifts and then differentiate from hip movement, from core movement. And switch directions. Keeping everything steady, plank-like. Gaze, belly, arm, lower the knee, lower the hand. Root both hands, walk them out a little bit more. Shift a bit side to side, and we'll go ahead and shift back and up to downward facing dog. Hopefully you don't feel too slippy in your socks. Feel free to bend one knee and then the other, pushing the ground away. And then shift forward into plank, top of a push-up. Round through your upper back a bit. Fingers spread wide. Connecting to core, lowest ribs knitting towards the front, hip points. And then rise it up and back, downward facing. Inhale, tiptoes, shift forward. Round. Squeeze your glutes here. And up and back, downward facing. So this last round of plank, we're gonna make it a little bit more vibrant. So as you shift forward, please come down onto your right forearm, then onto your left, rise up onto your right, then up onto your left. Now you can do all of this from your knees. So lower down to the right, lower down to the left, rise up and rise up. The idea is that you don't want to do this from table because that's a completely different action. That's way less of your core, way less of your upper body. Since we did the right two times, lower to your left elbow, lower to the right elbow. Raise onto your left, raise onto the right. One more time, lower to the left, lower to the right forearm. Raise onto the left, raise onto the right, and rise it up and back, downward facing dog. As you walk your hands to the very back of your yoga mat, push the ground away. So you're going to come into the back of the mat, have a little bend in your knees. Shake out your head, shake out your legs, let everything shake out a bit here. And then on your inhale, rise halfway up, so fingers to shins. Crown of the head reaches across the room, shoulder blades draw back. Exhale, bend and fold. Inhale, rise halfway. Exhale, bend and fold. One more time, inhale, rise halfway. And then exhale, start to stagger.